Hello, and um, we're investigating um, the, the way chocolate is stored, also the crystal size and taste, and how to temper chocolate, and then finally, the melting point of milk, whites, and plain chocolate. <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at these pictures of chocolate under a microscope and trying to answer some questions about how the size of the crystals, which are the things, appear, um, how that affects the taste of the chocolate. I've found that the smaller crystals mean that the chocolate tastes nicer and creamier. And if they are bigger crystals, then it's more gritty. Thank you very much. Ten. Right. Using the data on this piece of paper, I found out um, that chocolate tastes best when it has small crystals. This is a sample of fresh chocolate, and as you can see, the peaks are all very small, and there's hardly any large peaks. Whereas, we'd say this one, there's a lot of large peaks, and so the, the, the sheet of data says that it doesn't taste as nice. Ah, why does the sheet of data say it doesn't taste as nice? Well, this is a 20 degrees Celsius um, sample, and if you read the um, column for taste, texture, and flavour, it says it's buttery and gritty, and the flavour doesn't linger on the palate. Ah, okay. And the pattern with the using these is that the chocolate with the bigger crystals, such as <laughs> this one, this one, and this one, has. Um, a taste which is not as nice, whereas the ones with the smaller crystals taste creamier and um, stronger. Oh, fantastic. And um, the smaller crystals form on chocolate which is um, stored at room temperature. If you store it at other temperatures then the crystals become bigger. So this is um, chocolate which was stored in the fridge um, at about 4 Celsius and these large crystals are formed. This was probably stored in a warm place because that was at 31 Celsius and larger crystals are formed. And this one was probably stored in the freezer with minus 20 and large crystals are formed. Um, and the one the ones which have these spiky crystals, so this sample and this sample, yeah. also form this white layer called a bloom on the chocolate. Yeah. Ah, right. Good. Um, is that everything? Yeah. We might have filled Okay, which sample had the smallest crystals? Well, the fresh sample had the very smallest crystals. That was the control sample. And after that, the one stored at about room temperature, 22 Celsius, had the smallest crystals. Um, the ones, um, the other ones had larger crystals. Probably the 31 degrees Celsius had the next smallest. Then this one had rather wide crystals, you can see. This one had sort of taller crystals. Okay, fantastic. Um, does bloom, does the amount of bloom seem to correlate with the number of crystals, crystal size? Um, well, it seems to correlate with the spikiness of the crystals. These two were the ones where bloom formed, and they have this, they have sort of sp thin and high crystals. But this one didn't form bloom. I think that's because the crystals are quite wide, yeah, they even are. though they are high. And Wh these ones didn't form. Sorry. Which sample had the strongest chocolate flavour? 
but these two had the strongest chocolate flavor, so I think that's probably because they had the smallest, smaller crystal. Ah, very interesting. Is, do, you, do you think that taste, ah, you've just alluded to this, do you think yes. taste is linked to crystal size and grainy texture? Yes, I think that the smaller the crystals, the stronger the taste of the chocolate, and the less grainy the taste of the chocolate, the smaller it is. Okay, how big do you think the crystals should be for you to taste them? I've estimated that you can t it says on the sheet that you can taste the crystals with this Okay, one. James, so half this. 12. Okay, how big do you think the crystals should be for you to taste them? Well, it says you can taste the crystals in this sample. And I've estimated that the crystals in this are about 3 to 4 micrometers. Okay, fantastic. Which is very small. How it's big is that? smaller than the wavelength of light. No, it's too technical, isn't it? A bit. But uh, how, how many meters is a micrometer? One millionth of a meter. So you could fit a million meter, micrometers in one meter. Fantastic. Thank you very much. So this is some chocolate we tried tempering and it's looking shiny because we've tried getting rid of some special crystals that make it look shiny and snap well. Um, this is what chocolate companies do to try and make us buy their chocolate and eat it. Now, Dima, I can't see any crystals in that chocolate. Could you explain what the crystals are? Well, the crystals are actually tiny and microscopic, therefore you look at them through a microscope or scan them or something like that. I see. Thank you. So this is the chocolate cracking and you can see here it snaps well, although it's still a bit warm so it doesn't crack very well, but it snaps and that shows that it's been tempered, tempered well and you can see on this bit it's all shiny. So yeah. chocolate and you can see there I've just cracked it you see and there from our crowd we found out that dark chocolate has the highest melting point followed by white chocolate then by milk chocolate dark chocolate has the melting point of 47 degrees celsius white chocolate has the melting point of 46.5 degrees celsius and the milk chocolate has the melting point of 44 degrees Celsius. We've decided that the melting point of the chocolate is where it levels out from the ground. The milk chocolate look, took a lot more energy to start melting. It increased from 37 to 47 degrees centigrade, and then it decreased to um, something, and reached the melting point. The dark chocolate's temperature increased steadily at the start to 42 degrees Celsius. And then it took less heat energy to continue, then finally reaching the mountains. Finally, the white chocolate 